On this episode of Ask Christian Counseling Associates, we explore the lost art of wonder and creativity in our culture, its impact on our mental health, and how embracing God's creative spirit within us can restore it. Join us with special guests Isabel Toomey and Ben Sines of CCA as we explore creativity and the art of noticing. Welcome everybody to Ask Christian Counseling Associates, and I want to say welcome to my special guests, Isabel Toomey and Ben Sines. Uh, ben, uh, welcome back. He's, you've been on the podcast before. Isabel, this is your first time today. So why don't we start out with, with you and just tell the folks a little bit about yourself, what you're doing here at CCA, uh, and uh, anything else you'd like to share. Sure. Yeah, I work um, here as a counselor, also um, intake supervisor. Intake supervisor. Yes. Yeah, that um, crew of people that answer that first phone call when you call in. Um, and so I've been here for about two years. I love it. Um, happy to be. We, we told her to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by CCA. No. Um, yeah. What else do you want to know? Uh, well, so you're you're an intake supervisor, mm-hmm. and Ben, you're on the intake team, mm-hmm. and I'm an original intake person. <laughs> and you know, we're really passionate mm-hmm. about talking to the people who call in. You know, so yep. we always just take a pause to uh, thank everybody. You know, uh, it is really you know, an honor to get every phone call uh, from people who would use our number. Mm-hmm. Uh, and nowadays, it's not only the phone, but you can text and you can email, you know, just there's there's a ton of things that you field. Uh, and uh, we get, I don't know, would, would it be fair to say like 100 to 200 contacts a day? Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. And we have a we have a, a team of like 12 to 15 people. And yeah. you, you are one of the managers of that team. Yep. So we really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, beyond that, I, I think I would ask, what made you want to become a counselor? That's one of the things mm-hmm. we've been asking everybody who, from CCA who comes on. We asked Ben last time. So Sure. Yeah, yeah well, I'll give you <clears throat> maybe the condensed version. You know, my intention we, was... We have time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my intention was not to become a counselor when I went to school. Um, my undergrad is in fine art. Um, I had every intention to be an art teacher. Okay. Um, I finished my undergrad and kind of really just took a step back and said, what do I want to do? Um, and I felt that, you know, a lot of different people in my life that I feel were, you know, brought there by God and were speaking to me, um, really identified these qualities that I had that I was really passionate about, you know, talking to people, helping people. Hmm. Um, and that's kind of what brought me back to pursue counseling um, yeah. and eventually what brought me here. So you were going to be an art teacher. Yes. And I, I assume that that would be at a college or a public school or something yeah. like that, like art classes. Yeah. <clears throat> I would have yeah, originally tried to do like high school level, um, gone from there. Did you get to do any student teaching? Did you have any like experiences? Did, did yeah, I didn't do like full student teaching. I did a lot of um, like shadowing. I did some private art tutoring. Um, okay. But past that, I really didn't love classroom setting. So that's kind of what. Okay. That was that was paused me. One of the big things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Was there something you know as you uh, become? Uh, you know, wanting to become a counselor, I should say. Uh, any like one moment or a series of things that that happen for you that say like, yeah, like this is, this is it. This is what I want to do. Yeah. Well, outside of art school, I worked in um, restaurant leadership, um, and so my main focus there was developing leaders. Um, was are you allowed to say what restaurant you work with? <laughs> I don't know. Am I? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah you can I talk about in- anything. Right? <laughs> okay. I was going to say, I worked for Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. Um, <laughs> okay. So I love Chick-fil-A. We yeah. do love Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I did a lot of, um, again, leadership development. I did a lot of culture building. Um, it's not a title. It's not a title. I'm sorry. I brought it up too early. <laughs> I worked as a culture director. Um, culture director, director of culture. culture. That was That's yeah, cool. part of my title, um, part of my role, getting nice. people excited to work there, getting people excited to eat there. Right. Um, and yeah. so in that, I really said, like, okay, you know, if Chick-fil-A isn't my future, what is? What do I love about this job? And it was that um, almost development, one-on-one coaching that mm. tea time brought me here. 
called it tea time with my team. <laughs> well, they, how we've talked about this because I have. I also we both met our spouses in restaurants. We both. Uh, yeah, have, you're, you know, you have you have uh, experience was, around there too. Well, it's, well, now we're at the point now where we've got. Uh, you know, you just it's just CFA, and I'm OG, so Olive Garden. I was, you know, <laughs> but you spend so many so much time in a restaurant, and it you get to know people, and you. Mm-hmm. I think restaurant work is the closest thing. I mean, it fits so many different categories of jobs. Like you learn so, 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 so much about just people, life, you name it, working in a restaurant. And it's yeah. like, we even talked about with spouses, like you, the cool thing about, you know, meeting somebody like that in a restaurant is you see how they handle all types of different situations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you, yeah. you know, you see how they handle stress, how they handle responsibility, work ethic, uh, what happens when, you know, conflict, all these things. And you, mm-hmm. but yeah. Yeah, you know, so I didn't plan to talk about this, but we don't we don't make any plans, right, right Alex? So, uh, yeah, but you met your wife mm-hmm. at Olive Garden. I did. Wow. So my first date with my wife was at Olive Garden. That's so cool. You know, the the Olive Garden <laughs> no. here in Greensburg still exists. This is ancient history, but um, but I also worked in restaurants, and this might be uh, you know TMI for for the folks that don't want to know their counselors worked in restaurants, but the. Uh, uh, you know, my first job was in, in a restaurant. Now, it, just memory etched into my mind. I feel like I've talked about this before, maybe not. <clears throat> but uh, it was called uh, Cassidy's at the time. But it was before that. It was two plus two, and it was right on. Uh, it was in Allegheny County, and it was this. Uh, it was like uh, this like traditional food place. But I, I was the dishwasher, hmm. and I, you know, the dishwashing line was right next to the kitchen, and so me and the and the cook would spend hours and hours and hours together and uh you know i just i just really learned to just uh you know i was just a kid and he was he must have been in his 40s or 50s but he wore this full chef uniform and the kitchen was like 90 to 110 degrees perpetually Mm -hmm. all the time at least that's what it seemed like to me and he (laughs) he had some kind of like skin reaction that he had, he had like hives from his head down to his toe, mm-hmm. and he was just you know, he was this like salty uh, Vietnam veteran mm. who was just you know we would talk about all kinds of stuff, but uh, yeah, like it was really like I learned about life, like you know, just from the people in the kitchen and in the restaurant. But but a pivotal experience to me that I you know, I'd like to tell the story of, you, you know, you go in there and the 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 dishes would be to the ceiling and they'd be, you know, and I'd be like work and work and work. And I, you know, I'd be like, man, I'm really doing a great job. <laughs> and, um, the owner pulled me out one time he, and the, like right outside the kitchen was this bar and he'd sit at the bar and, uh, I can't even remember his first name, but his last name was Cassidy. It was his place. But, uh, and I thought he was going to tell me what a great job I was doing. And, and it turned into hey rich. I know you're thinking of, you're doing well, but you really need to hurry it up. Oh, <laughs> and and I, liter- I literally felt that I was working the fastest mm-hmm. that I could mm-hmm. and learned that the expectation was past that. Mm. And that, that was like mind blowing to me. I remember having to be like, where am I going to get more speed? But I, but I did. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. And I don't, you know, I just, I just saw the, the restaurant as a tough environment and it was, it was, you know, it was about dealing with reality because if you didn't get it done, you didn't get it done and everybody knew it. And it was, it was a great place to learn how to work. And, and, you know, my second memory is, is much the same that I, you know, I, I worked in a, in a dairy that and I was the dishwasher again and literally you know, the pots and pans to the ceiling and the, you know, that'd be my job. And I remember they, they tried to hire people alongside of me and, uh, uh, this one time this person came in and she looked at the pots and pans and she cried and I was like like look it's gonna be okay like, you know, <laughs> well just just watch me do it and people would cycle through there and they wouldn't come back hmm. you know and, and I learned like some people would do this work and some people wouldn't you know but like like you just like work one pot at a time and you <laughs> well, that, I feel like that that just applies to everything. Like it applies to, I mean, everything you've done at CCA applies to counseling. Uh, you know, just. I need you to close sorry, sorry. No, it it um 
We'll keep that correction in, Gary. That's part of the realness. <laughs> yeah, of the that's why. <laughs> um, but it is like it's just all those interactions that constant having to go, go, go. Even you know, you said it's um, it's it's real. It's reality. Like people see, you know, during because you worked at you worked there during COVID, right? Mm-hmm. You, hmm. I mean, talk about learning how to adapt you cannot envision the amount of problems you're going to have like every you solve one you've got four more like you don't think things like things just would happen that you never expected and you just had to constantly like you know the day goes on people still want what they want you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do Mm -hmm. you gotta push forward and i always thought just even dealing with customers and stuff in a way I translate that into counseling too in a way like what does this person need you know if i'm a server and you come and sit you know and you and your wife are on your first date you're you're not married yet yeah. you probably don't want me to sit there and chat you up and tell you my life story and, and right. ask y'all in like <laughs> just you know sit down beside you and say hey, what are you? all that stuff and yeah. not everybody gets that some servers like that's what they do every time Mm-hmm. And that's not what they should be doing every time. Now, maybe there is a guest that comes in that wants that, like that comes in and, and wants to connect with the server and wants to hear their life story and wants to be chatted up. But being able to figure out, okay, this guy looks like he's on a first date. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to make sure he has a really nice time. I'm going to make sure the food's good. I'm going to mm-hmm. make sure his water's always always full. I'm going to make mm-hmm. sure he doesn't need anything. And, you know, anything I can do to make his experience just a little bit more comfortable or a little less stressful, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so much about relationship and reading people. And, you know, to me, like when somebody comes into CCA, like ushering them, you know, through and mm-hmm. making them feel comfortable, being a servant. Right. You know, and that's what I consider counselors to be. Like we serve people, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, yeah, I see sometimes people in these professional roles have difficulty with that. Mm-hmm. If you worked at a restaurant, you learned all those things. Yeah, we were listening to a podcast the other day, and it was talking about like what does it look like if God were fill in the blank serving tables, you know, counseling. Mm-hmm. making art you know kingdom representative yeah yeah kingdom it was all about how you know at every every vocation you know not everybody has to be a minister or a therapist mm-hmm. or you know how can whatever you're doing you need to make sure you're being god's representative in that in that space mm-hmm. yeah for sure yeah. how does god you know if you're washing if you're washing dishes mm-hmm. you know how what does it look like if god's washing dishes or, if, right. you know, if somebody who's embodies a spirit, of, you know, it took up that role. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, that is interesting. So all three of us have, have, have done. <laughs> it, 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 it's just cool. I think it helps. Makes you learn how to work hard. Definitely. I would not argue with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So uh, Chick-fil-A and Olive Garden <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I have like a, all my teenage years at least and i think i was probably i was in the college halfway before i departed well what uh, when did you start working you <laughs> tell people when people look at you like yeah wait how old are you what when did you start working uh, i worked at chick-fil-a for 15 years and how old are you what? i'm 26 and you haven't <laughs> and, you, and you quit working there when last year okay so so, so we're like osha don't be listening to no. this <laughs> <laughs> no it was part of my Family business, so rules didn't apply. Yeah, that's good. We believe in family businesses. Yeah. You start working early. Mm -hmm. So from the time (laughs) that you were 11, like formally you were on site. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I think it's so cool. Yeah, that's really cool. (laughs) So so yeah, that that totally explains how you made it to intake supervisor, and uh, (laughs) you're doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so we have this format today. Uh, you know, we don't have a format, but you, you, you know, I knew that you wanted to talk about. Sorry, Alex. The uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you, you have a interest in creativity mm-hmm. and uh, and how that can take a hold of our lives, and that has something to do with counseling. Mm-hmm. Is it uh, it's it's psychological, and it has to do with faith. So uh, so tell me about this. What what, what are you thinking? Yeah, well, I feel like we were originally 
thinking about the topic, you know, we hosted a worship night not too long ago. Yeah. Um, and, and we have a worship night at CCA, mm-hmm. and we encourage our counselors to to come, and they can bring their family members, and mm-hmm. we would we would worship together. Yeah, as a company. Yeah, and so we were really, and we led, and yeah. we're thinking about worship and what that looks like, creativity in that space, and I know that just start you know thinking of all these different almost rabbit trail ideas from that but like you know creativity comes from god we give it back to god and what does that look like for different people Hmm. and that's kind of how how did how did we connect i was trying to think about that like because we talked a little bit a bit about this but in terms of the creativity and especially like you know with that mental health aspect it just feels you know god is a creator and it feels really good to create like to just start having these ideas and and especially when you work with somebody and you just build off things i you know i don't remember what it was but there was something where i think i told her i was like i'm really good at starting ideas and she's like that's good i'm really good at finishing them <laughs> i was like okay <laughs> so let's let's see where this goes and mm-hmm. it's crazy how it's kind of played out where i'll just be like you know, we'll be mid, mid shift. And I'm like, Isabel, I just had this random crazy thought pop in my head. What do you think about this, this, this? And she's like, oh my gosh, that's really cool. Give me, you know, uh, you know, five minutes later, she goes, okay, this is cool. What if we take it this way, this way, this way? And I'm like, this is great. This is perfect. <laughs> like I would never, you know, I made it so far and she's able to just take it the rest of the way. And it winds up being like this. It's, it's just energizing. Is really the I think that's the best way I can describe it. Like I, I don't know. I leave just like anytime we just have a little brainstorming session, I just leave amped up. Um, it's almost like you ever wake up in the middle of the night and you just I don't know whatever's going on. You just feel like you've solved twenty eight problems in your life and you need to get up and write them down or something. It's like every morning in between three. And five <laughs> is it really? Yeah. Is it really? No, that's for me anyway. I don't know about you. All, no, but. that's exactly what it is. What are we? 3, 3 a.m. There, we'll occasionally have like, I'll wake up to an email and it'll say, random 3 a.m. thought. I had this cool <laughs> idea. What do you think mm-hmm. about this? Yeah. yeah and my, my alarm clock is set for 5.15 on my phone. And then somehow my all the clocks in the bedroom are like 10 minutes ahead of that. So I always wake up at the you know 10 minutes ahead of time. And I'm like, oh, I could sleep for five more minutes. And then I start <laughs> thinking about everything. Mm-hmm. That the problems that will be solved. Mm-hmm. Yes, and the sleep is over. It's like no, I better get up. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so it's energizing. It is energizing, and yeah. there's a sorry. There, you know, we've looked. There's a neurological component to that. Where again, I think it all comes back to us being created in God's image. Like everything, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. all of our. You know, I try and think of what somebody's interested in, and at its purest form is that part of God's image, you know, because there's things we can take that are, you know, part of God's image, but then have been, you know, distorted by the world and and we kind of make them very ungodly. But Mm -hmm. again, if you can get to the, to, to the root of that and okay, what is the basic, um, you know, like why, why are we interested in creation? Why are we interested Mm -hmm. in, in things that are beautiful? Why are we interested in adventure risk taking uh why do we why do people enjoy you know suspenseful movies what you know mm-hmm. there's a because some you know you might hear well you know these whatever you're watching that's not a very christian thing to watch okay maybe that's true but is there at it in its purest form is there a reason that you know humans in general are, are attracted to those type of things like we um i love thinking about just and we've talked about this. We, I think we had a whole conversation about this on intake one day. It's just the different, like what type of shows are out there, you know? Think of how many restoration shows are out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People love restoration. People love do-it-yourself stuff. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, it's just, it's filled with that. Um, you know, how can we turn this beat up thing into something that's beautiful? How can we, uh, I know a lot of people love the amazing race. Like what about that is part of God's character? I don't know. That winds up being a conversation a lot. Well, you know, and I was trying to look uh, for the place where it says that we're made in God's image. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and uh, 
But uh, I turned to Genesis 1 and, uh, you know, all the things that are created. And, uh, you know, so, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters, you know, Genesis 1, 1. Now, let's find a, find a place where, in the, you know, where it says we're made in God's image, and uh, put that up on the screen for us. Okay. Um, but, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, we were talking before about... How, uh, you know, when you get to create, you know, and that, you know, uh, we're, we're, you know, in some ways, uh, you know, a, a reflection of, of God, you know, and uh, so we have some ability to create where God is the ultimate creator. Mm-hmm. You know, so you see, like, right from the beginning of, of what we know, God was engaging, you know, this, this formless and void and dark you know, chaotic, you know, thing. And, uh, you know, but, but to me, you know, we were, you know, before we were talking about like being bored, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and I was just, it, it, there's, there's this thing that we look at our lives, we look at our jobs, look at our relationships, what, you know, whatever it be. And, and you see nothing like it's formless and void. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, in that, that is not the way God sees it. Mm-hmm. You know, that is not the heart of faith, you know, and so, so, um, you know, I remember these times in, in my life, it was sort of depressing, you know, and, and uh, you know, I often say Western PA, the weather in Western PA in the wintertime, <laughs> you know, it, it can grind you down and in, into a place where you have to build yourself back up again and people will come here and, and, you know, I just, uh, you could look out into the weather and be like, blah, there's nothing out here for me today. Mm-hmm. You know, and and creativity is being able to see things that are that are formless and void, and seeing the possibility in it. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, to me, it's like the end of depression. You mm-hmm. know, it dispels anxiety, and every you know label that that branches out from there. You know, this is a core topic of things that you know that we have to embrace life, like God embraces life. Mm. You know, and so, uh, you know, so, so 127 uh, in Genesis, God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. You know, uh, so, you know, I don't want to get too theological about it, but it, but it means, <laughs> you know, to, you know in, in some sense, that, that God gives us the ability to be creative, and so we should be. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and when we do... That that you know uh, that boredom, which is the rejection of all possibility, and saying there's nothing there for me, uh, you know. On the other side of that is being energized, hopeful. That's a neat way to put that. Rejection of all possibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I like that. And, <laughs> uh, you know, so I enjoyed the conversation we had earlier. You know, but you, you see me you know, working within groups of people Mm -hmm. all of the time. And uh, we we talk about part of being a company of Mm -hmm. counselors, part of being the church. You know, you're a group of people, you know, gathered in the name of Christ Mm -hmm. and saying, you know, we believe that, that God can make something out of this. Yeah. You know, and seeing the possibility. So there, there is no relationship that we're not interested in. You know, there's no opportunity that we want to pass on. Uh, and you know, boredom is the rejecting, you know, the rejection of creativity to me. Mm-hmm. You know, it is saying that yeah, it's, nothing is possible with this. You get into rejecting people, rejecting your life. I say that's that sounds like something in a. You know, marriage is going down the drain. You know, there's I see no possibility. You know, I'm bored with my marriage. But then, if you take it to what you said right there, being bored with your marriage means you reject any possibility of a future or of a or of a creativity of. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and to me, you know that that is part of the brokenness of the world. It's very tempting that we could give up, and uh, yeah. So we talk about things like synergy. 
like in a group of people, uh, the sum of the parts, uh, you know, are greater, you know, uh, there's this extra uh, that nobody could produce on their own. And, you know, when people come together and believe in that, set the standard for that, achieve it, amazing things happen. Yeah. And, you know, we believe that that, that kind of engagement, you know, uh, and, and sometimes we, we, we give it cheap terms like working in teams or, <laughs> you know, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun working in teams, especially in a field that is typically isolated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you were telling us about that earlier. Yeah. Sorry, you have yeah. Something to say. Well, no, I was just thinking about, you know, when we talk about creativity, um, inevitably the response is, well, I'm just not creative, mm-hmm. right? Someone will say, like, I'm, I just don't have that. And I think that, you know, we have a lot of people have a narrow view maybe of what creativity like it has to be art or it has to be music or whatever but you know when you think about the church and how we're supposed to function as a group of people right there's different gifts there's different roles right like your hand and I'm a foot you know like different things that make the body of Christ work and I think that to say like I'm not creative or I don't have this makes me not able to be in those spaces is a really dangerous kind of way of thinking yeah it's minimizing or denying the possibility and so when i hear that that there's a worship night at cca when i am on my way to meet with the church on any given sunday uh, i have to accept that god has amazing things planned and that we can be a part of that and this could be it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and to believe in that. And so I wonder, like, when, when we're setting something like that, what will happen? You know, and I want to find out, you know, <laughs> and 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 I, I want to believe that it might not be today, you know, but eventually, you know, it, it's going to happen, you know, mm-hmm. because God is engaging that. And he's allowed us to, to be with that, to make the choice, uh, you know, to be part of his creation. And so, um, yeah, like, like I, I get really um, energized about that, <laughs> and, and I really believe, you know, I see things like, uh, that, that are discouraging, uh, like, uh, you know, we, we will have people who will get stuck, and they'll be like, I'm, I'm not getting anything out of this. Yeah, but but even like like in our our work teams, you know, so like when you join CCA as a counselor or you're you're part of the administrative staff or anybody who works here, you're really part of what we're building up that people can come to. And so we're in this meeting and we're we're uh, I'm trying to develop this logo, uh, you know, for uh, for a, a new uh, project that we we've, we've talked about on the podcast, but I don't know if I have to get into the details of that as much <laughs> as you know, you were in that meeting and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, you know, I don't know what this is going to be like. And all of a sudden you like step forward. I did not know you were an artist, but you're like, you're like, here, I drew it on the back of a napkin. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wow, like that is. And and one of the things that, that really, you know, I've, I've artists in my family and I've often described it as, um, you know, they could like come into this building and, and from what they could get here they could build like a superstructure castle in the back and be like look i i built this castle in my first <laughs> and i'm like how did you do that it would be a million years you know even before i could i could draw that on the napkin mm-hmm. but now that i have that you know what i can do has been you know transformed and moved forward like light years just in that meeting and i really respect that you know, because that, you know, is what happens when that group of people comes together. Mm-hmm. And as a, as a director of the, of the company, and we, you know, again, we were talking about this. <laughs> um, yeah, I've learned to love that because I could say, like, now I know what this person could do. And this person, if we put these people together, mm-hmm. it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just really, you know, building relationships like that to learn and, and again, I, I think that part of that, you know, because, you know, at the foundation, our hope is that that involves the power of God, you know, that he is, is leading us. And in the church, you know, in tradition, we, we know that that's true, that he, he will lead the church. And we can be a part of that. But when that comes together, there'll be amazing transformative things that will happen. 
Yeah. And I'll say people need to step out in faith in those in those mm. times. You know, that I'm sure that was a little scary drawing. <laughs> so what, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, were you nervous drawing something on a napkin and like, okay, I've never so you know, this is my boss, this is a director of CCA. I've never <laughs> told him I can draw. He's talking about this thing. I can see it, I can draw it, I could give it to him, but what if? Mm. You know, and part of being creative is also you know, that makes people mm-hmm. anxious too, because you know, the more creative you are, usually the more things you can think of that could also go wrong. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think a lot of people get very ner you know, this is something we've been talking about in my church a lot recently, is you have you know, everybody's got a talent. Like we have a gift. God didn't mm-hmm. make somebody that is not useful. Like it just doesn't it it, it didn't happen. Um and so not only finding out what that is, but being obedient and faithful and and just being bold enough to step out and be like, you know what, this is, and it kind of goes along with that, how creating things is also an act of worship Mm -hmm. and needing to put aside the fear of what somebody else might think of it. And just, you know what, this is, I, this might be what you need. This is my, you know, this is my offering Mm -hmm. to you. And I, you know, I hope you appreciate it, which clearly you did, but Mm -hmm. in that, that reinforce you know that that reinforces it i think that builds people up and you know i i love encouraging people i like i we talk about this a lot i i'm sorry i keep saying we talk about this because we do um we were talking before the podcast we're supposed to be in here talking but that was okay that was, a lot of ideas came out of that we just you know we love people I, lo- I love people i love getting people i love getting people excited about something that they're passionate about and that i think that's mm-hmm. when you find s- people's gifts and talents like if you know if you love rocks i don't know anything about rocks i'm not interested in rocks but if you love rocks and you're really excited about rock i feel like alex is kind of like this too like alex if you get excited about something like you're like you're gonna get me like i'm gonna be like i don't know what you're talking about man but i love it i'm in let's go take me on this ride (laughs) teach me rocks definitely definitely Yeah. yeah But anyway, I can't, I can't remember why you said that. Just it, it was cool that like, don't you, wouldn't you say that even right there, you know, to have that vision and like what you said about how amazing things are going to happen, that takes people to have that faith to step out, put themselves out there just a little mm-hmm. bit and say, you know what, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a little bit vulnerable here and I'm going to show you, uh, you know, one of my gifts and I'm, mm-hmm. and I'm just going to pray that God uses this and that you don't reject me or or tell me this is stupid and not what you think and think it should be because that's mm-hmm. what the I think that's the fear people have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for me like the creativity involves people and you know so it can't be my ideas and we try to cultivate that environment here where people will be encouraged to to put out ideas and it it can't be a scary thing. You know, especially yeah, I think of you know, being a younger counselor or working, you know, when I was younger in an organization and just being like, I don't even know if these people want, want me to talk, you know? And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, so I don't know how people feel now, you know, but when you're in a room of 12, 15 people, you know, can you say something or put forth an idea? I try to, to really let everybody know that's what we're doing. You know, and and the the part that hurts is that sometimes as an individual you want to see it happen a certain way, you know. But uh, like say for instance, you you know you took that drawing, and then Gary, that's the drawing that you got, <laughs> and it came back, and there was a couple people drawing things, and um, you know we had a way to bring that together because it was ideas from both images plus what was on the napkin, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this is this is super cool, but we uh, have to present that in January to uh, to the group uh, Concepts of Truth and uh, I hope that they'll like it <laughs> <laughs> you know and probably what will happen is that that in that group they're they're going to continue to create that mm-hmm. that vision for where we're going it is and that's yeah. even the same thing as like handing the napkin over it's like you're handing you know okay now now this is the collective CCA napkin we're passing off to you guys we hope you like it so we have to trust each other mm-hmm. and to get anywhere you eventually have to do that and so one of the things that I'm I feel like I'm always doing you know at CCA is encouraging people to trust 
and to move from an individual to a group. Because I've realized that in the church as an individual, there is this thing uh, about me and God that is that is sacred and true, and that is very important. You know, our personal relationship. Yeah, but then there's others. You know, love God, love others, and, and so right after that, and God's plan is is people. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and for that, if you don't get that part of it, you, you know, uh, you will miss out on everything that God has planned. Mm-hmm. And so, counselors love to be alone. They love to be it's it's me and the client. They love to be in individual counseling. They love to be in solo private practices. And I've learned to reject that. You know, we're a group practice, you know, and, and we, we, we lift up that value, you know, because, you know, we think of, of the church and like we're never alone, like we're working with other people. And so that is, that's, a, that's a, a jump of trust to, to, you know, ask people to, you know, commit to something like that and all the things that could happen. Mm-hmm. You know, because you don't have control over the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, but when you're on a team, like what we're describing that happened, you know, with the creation of that logo, uh, would never have happened. I would not have done that in a million years. Yeah. You know? um, we also encourage clients to know that your endpoint is in finding a great counselor and being an individual counseling for the rest of your life. That's not what we hope for people. So we have group counseling, and it's voluntary. You know, and and uh, talked a lot, a lot about it, but it, you know, we, we call that our transparency and accountability uh, groups. Um, you know, that 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 will spur us on to growth, and uh, so we call them tag groups. But it's an intermediate step before people leave CCA and root themselves in a more creative and profound way in the church. And we want people along the way, you know, this is one of the things that are core to Christian counseling that makes it different if, than if you go to a secular counselor or you, you, you put your trust in that. That we want people to, to be inspired and, 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 and energized by what God could do mm-hmm. and how I could become connected to that in a church. And how I could learn through counseling, how I've become disconnected from that, how I've given up hope on that, how I've become bored with it, mm-hmm. you know, and, and to realize that that's part of how I'm stuck in my mind and in my heart that I, ha- I have these symptoms now. And, and so uh, we, we have some very traditional components, but, that, but that's one of them is moving from this individual mindset because we're still individuals. We still have our personality. We're still who we are, our identity, you know, and, and that's the way God created us. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's defined. But we get a f- more fuller sense of that through each other. Yoking, I always think of uh, yoking up. You know, what's, what's that? I don't know if you want to pull that first up. Though I think it was in Matthew. Um, yes. You know, my, take my yoke upon you, my burden is easy, or... Yeah, uh, but that's... Well, yoke is easy, burden is my, my Yeah, the, yeah, and... Um, we should know these verses off by we heart. We should. When we're talking here, <laughs> we're very distracted. But that's uh, <laughs> you know, that's what getting in that team does. Like I can't So Matthew eleven, twenty eight through thirty. If we could have that up on the screen. Just that's like, what a tag group does. It gives you gives you other people to, to yoke up with. I mean it's you know Is that it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um come to me all who look is this I want the NASB. Can I have that? Okay. Not the Revised Standard Version. All right. We'll be back Please. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm very very picky on. We probably could have kept that, but. Um. <laughs> Would you say like your your boldness and your in your faith and like having having somebody there with you to, you know, just to. There we are. To carry the burden. So, so Matthew eleven twenty nine and 30, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble at heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke. And that's what you were referring to. My yoke is comfortable and my burden is light. 
or you know in some versions it says my yoke is easy and my and my burden is light and so uh, it, in this in this metaphor and I, I learned this in church the other day the uh, you know the imagery is that God is 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 we're yoked to God and that God is pulling and we are attached to that yoke pulling also but when he's pulling mm-hmm. and we're we're doing that work with him uh, that burden is no longer the kind of burden like we were trying to pull it with two people you know it, if you think of a, a big powerful you know uh two oxes but one was bigger than the other that first ox that's more powerful is really pulling it you know, and that's what jesus is inviting mm-hmm. us into and uh and it does you know that that to me is is part of creativity because what he's calling us to do does not seem uh, like a light burden it mm-hmm. does not seem comfortable you know and, and he's saying trust me mm-hmm. you know you'll learn you know, have yeah. faith i think the other thing that you know as we talk about creativity that comes up at least for me is this idea of seeing God as like the ultimate creator reflecting on his creation and it should induce this like awe or wonder um, in who he is, right? You can look up like at the heavens, you can look at the stars and like the vastness of creation down to like the smallest cell in our body and just see how creative he is and see how much he cares for us and i think that inevitably that leads to that surrender that you're talking about like right my one of my favorite verses is like if he cares for the grass of the field like how much more right does he care for you and so as we're looking and reflecting on who god is and his greatness yeah like of course i want him to be leading I think that's part of that. The awe like makes you feel small, but not in an insignificant mm-hmm. way. It makes you feel like I'm not in, like I have to surrender. Like look at, you know, those, uh, I love those videos of where, I know you gave me the one analogy, the golf ball. Yeah. But you know, if you, you, we, we think we're, it's easy to get, to, to get stuck in like, we're in this room. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. There's a Greensburg and there's Pennsylvania and this, but then it just, you you don't like we forget how just how small we are and that what's that guy's name louis louis giglio yeah but you know you, 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 a golf ball. <laughs> it's really mind-blowing to just keep zooming out mm-hmm. and then you zoom out some more and you zoom out some more and you zoom out some more and you realize it, it's you know like if you took a teaspoon of water and dropped it in the ocean or and, you know emptied the oceans and put a teaspoon of water in the oceans like that's i don't even know if we're quite that much water compared to the whole ocean if that's the you know the mm. universe everything that god's created i mean and it's you just start thinking of it and you you get a, it's kind of overwhelming but if you look at it with a sense of awe you start going okay i really can't like i do need to surrender like this is mm-hmm. i'm yeah. just you know use me yeah mm-hmm. use me and and with working with other people, it makes that a lot easier. Like we've gotten so much more done working together than we mm-hmm. ever would have. And and even little things, you feel bolder when you have somebody with you, because mm-hmm. it's like, well, you know, if this doesn't go well, we'll I'll see you at the unemployment line. You know, <laughs> I, like yes, it I can I, fail. <laughs> <laughs> like I texted, we had, you know, talking about the. I guess I guess this will come out later. Like the Santa promo thing for the intake Christmas party. <laughs> I, you know, I, I texted you asking you, and I don't, if it wasn't her and I working on that together, I don't think I would have ever texted you, but because it was like, well, if he hates my idea, it's our idea. So, <laughs> so, blame it on so he hates it 50% yeah. less or I would, I, you know, I just, Isabel wanted me to text you this, um, <laughs> but I did, you know, so just little things like that. It just makes you a little bit bolder, like, mm-hmm. and sure, you know, and sure enough, you said, Hey, that's a great idea. Let's do it. But those are things that I think when people are isolated, you get stuck in your loop of, Oh, well, that's not a good idea. But when you have somebody else mm-hmm. and, and I'm like, hey, Isabel, I was thinking about this and she goes, what? that's so cool i was thinking something similar the other day let's you know yeah <laughs> let's figure this thing out let's get going christian counseling associates is ready to serve you providing a wide range of counseling services 
Christian counseling is accessible to everyone. We serve both Christians who want their faith integrated into the counseling process or those holding any beliefs or attitudes towards spirituality. With many years of counseling experience, our counselors are professional, licensed, highly trained, and rooted in their commitment to their church and communities. CCA is able to provide a full range of clinical counseling services. For more information, visit our website at www.ccawpa.com. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and that's part of the creativity, you, you know, and again, in God's design, you know, bringing believers together, you know, and and committing to that. Yeah, I find myself things doing things at CCA that I never would have done, uh, like being a Santa Claus suit to the staff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we're so you know, joking around. I mean, there's there's professional things uh, that I've done because of people in my life here at CCA, and before that. You know how I really trusted to give myself over to that because you you do have to give up things like again the way I wanted it to be, uh, and um, but those people were in my life leading me to things, and I had to trust that that was God's will that that was God's direction for my life, and sometimes it's tough you mm -hmm. can't see it, you know you, you have to trust, um, and sometimes you disagree with the direction the group is going in. You know, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, it's much, much more difficult uh, than if you're on your own. You know, that's easy. You know, and, and that's that's where Jesus flips this over and, and says, you know, you, you, you need to learn from me. You know, uh, you know, I what, what I'm asking you to do it seems tough. You know, but but at the heart of me, I am kind, gentle, humble, uh, and you'll find rest here. And and, and he means it. You know, this is, you know, doing it his way, you know, will involve people and, and we have to trust in that and we'll be at peace. And so, yeah, I think of, you know, here at CCA, uh, you know, we were coming into the holiday season, you know, so it's, uh, uh, by the time you'll see this, probably Thanksgiving will be over, but it's, it's a week before Thanksgiving and then we're going to go into Christmas and, uh, we, we have these, uh, Christmas parties. <laughs> uh, and uh, so uh, I'm going to promote that to our staff by dressing up as Santa Claus. And uh, <laughs> you've prepared a script uh, for me to say, and it'll be really creative and fun. Uh, you know, but that's, you know, we're, we're inspiring people to go a certain direction. We believe that when we, you know, one of the things that God is calling us to do is to celebrate these important days. Uh, and, uh, you know, that is a guaranteed way that we can say to the world that Jesus is Lord and Savior. And, you know, we do that within our families. Uh, here in December, you know, we will uh, creatively motivate people in their counseling sessions to lift that up in their lives. And we'll, we'll do that with each other as a company. We get to do that in church. And we can be in a place in our lives, uh, again, where we're bored with it. It doesn't mean anything. Like, I'm doing this because I have to, or it's a date on the schedule. And then we miss the point. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. That when you get to the heart of this, th these are the opportunities of our lives. You know, and, and they're fleeting. You know, we, you know, we don't get these chances forever. You know, and, and going back to, uh, you know, to God as uh, the perfect creator, you know, he engages that, and, and so could we. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. This uh, there's a lot in this, uh, you, you know, that uh, it's very philosophical, <laughs> <laughs> but it's very much a part of the faith, and and I believe it's part of counseling. You, you know, you have to be you have to be creative or open your heart to be creative about what this intervention can do in your life. You know, what seeing a counselor could do. What's going to happen when you open your heart to another person, and that can be tough for a while. Mm -hmm. you know, and then, and then again, let, you know, uh, with our with our counselors, there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes along, opportunities that you can engage here that you're not going to get uh, in other places. That is true. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes people pay you to write jingles. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but it's, it, you know, it's, it's true. Ben, there, ben Rice jingles for us. There is a, <laughs> there is an, it's just an incredible situation to just flourish in whatever possible way you can imagine. Yeah. Truthfully, that's the way I see it. Yeah. I mean, that that's what's going to happen. Like when we live our lives in the church, when we do something in the name of Jesus Christ with a collection of people. So, you know, I definitely see that. Mm-hmm. And uh, have pursued that in my life, and 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 once again, we want our clients to to embrace that, it, you know. So I would I would start out in in the Christmas season, you know. What does that mean to embrace with your family for real this time? You know, to to make that a priority, and maybe that's part of why people need to be here in December, you know, because they're stuck and they, you know, they're just not there. If if we're to be honest. You know, we're not waking up at five o'clock saying, "Man, today could be it." I mean, this could really be the, the amazing moment. Yeah, every, five a.m. Yeah. every day should be. This is the day. This is the big day. What is, what's the what's the old? This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the day. You know, I. But you were supposed to bring your your guitar I'm today, sorry. weren't you? <laughs> And, and Isabel, you you play instruments too. What, what did she's you play? A, sorry, she's a piano player and a singer, and yeah. she killed it. Yeah. yeah. So you were the you played the piano and sang at the worship night. I did. And yep. you played the guitar. Yes, and hopefully, yeah, it was fun. We were super nervous, so hopefully Very that's inspir- yeah. yeah. So hopefully that's inspiration to be bold and step out if you have mm-hmm. some sort of anything. It's okay. Yeah. It's good to be a little nervous about it. Well, I hope you'll, you'll do that. It was uh, fun. We had it. We did. We had a blast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there'll be a time where you're not nervous about it anymore. If you it keep on either. doing it. I'm still nervous. Every, I leave, pra- I I leave praise and worship at church, and I'm still nervous every Sunday. Oh, wow. I don't know why. Okay. I don't know. It's no, that makes sense me. to me. I'm, I'm a little nervous every time. We're good. I do something. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, but that was. It was a really cool. And we even talked about... Um, you know, because afterwards it was we had ref- we were trying to reflect like what went well, what didn't go well, what do we, you know, what can we improve upon? Um, one of the things we talked about was like a what type of space mm-hmm. should we create for people to worship? Mm-hmm. And then we started talking about the ways we worship, and it's interesting because we're you know in, in a lot of ways she and I are very similar, but then there's mm-hmm. other ways where we're totally opposite. You know, you love to be. Tell me if I'm wrong. You love to be like you really enjoy you enjoy singing. You yeah. love standing up. Mm-hmm. You like you know. Yeah, I find a lot of joy in like the words reflecting on you know what I'm saying to God in a worship space. Because you asked me, you said, "What type of worship would you prefer? Like, what is or what like what's my thing?" And I was thinking about that. I'm like, you know, I don't because. I would. My favorite growing up was sitting there listening to a choir. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't particularly care to sing. Um, I don't know if that's wrong. I don't know, but <laughs> I do. Like I love sitting there, just kind of appreciating whatever somebody else is doing. I love. I love a big choir. I used to love when this lady would sing "Oh Holy Night" mm-hmm. every year for Christmas, and it wasn't that I didn't want to sing. I was just so happy to just full of joy sitting there, just watching and listening to her sing, mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was thinking, you know, if I would have gone to worship night, I would have been happy just sitting down and just watching the whole thing. Just be like, man, that's cool. These people have some awesome gifts. Like, let's yeah. let's just just soak it in. Whereas somebody else would want to be up singing, dancing, whatever it is. And it's just kind of mm-hmm. interesting how different people are in their spaces. Yeah. And I think yeah. in the same way of like creativity, right? Like we worship different ways, but God is going to meet us in those spaces right so like god might speak to me very differently than he would speak to somebody else using kind of that as a yeah. as a basis for that i think during during the holidays you know just watching things you know just going to the church services and seeing what they set out their best you know in, in those celebrations but uh yeah what's going to happen in those spaces and yeah, if you want to talk about creativity, you know, uh, definitely though engaging that. Um, you know, I, I like to sing in the choir. Um, I love listening. the bell choir. Do you yeah, guys have a bell I, choir at your church ever? Uh, you know, I've never I've never done that, <laughs> but uh, I've I've become 
very interested you in. You weren't on the bell choir at First Church? Did you watch him though? I, I was I, never on I one. I never played the bells. <laughs> I, maybe, maybe. It <laughs> was a big deal back at. Then your first church. I've been at some churches, you know, the, the chime bells. Oh, ching, I love them. Never did it myself, but I used that was one of my favorite. Anytime I saw the at one of my churches, they were called the drum and ringers. And anytime <laughs> I saw in the little thing, the drum and ringers were coming, I was like, yes, they, drum and they ringers. They used to do that in the church that we're in now, but they stopped doing it. Mm-hmm. And uh, but those were things that anybody could could do if you just practiced, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, but uh, I've I've begun to look at the old hymns. And I, you know, I like all kinds of music, but but the the words in there, and and then singing the parts, hmm. and so it's harder to me, like in the modern worship music, to sing the parts, but um, to to practice that, you know, it's become like a thing that I do every week now. Because that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> I like. I'm an old. I'm an old hymn guy. I like. That's that's what I love. Yeah. Yeah. I can't play any instruments, so but like yeah, I could I could do that, and uh, so I, I'm on the er, like we have an early traditional choir, mm. and uh, that that's become you know how I spend some of my extra time. That's pretty week. cool, yeah. But then we have we have people in our you know uh, Sarah and our family. She's like a musical genius. She's uh, <laughs> she's had a good run. Uh, she's gotten the lead, the lead in the play. These mm-hmm. last couple of years, always singing, always playing the piano, can play three other instruments, that kind of stuff. So, you know, that's you could have those kind of things in your life. And I think, I mean, if we're gonna, if we, there's there's so much in this topic that sort of gets into psychology, but but I think yeah, I think I um, you know, kind of going back to those tag groups, like. You know, if you think about like us doing that together and, and saying like that, that's a model of the church. But if you look at some of the greatest minds in secular psychology, like if you look at Irving Lom and Carl Rogers, at the end of their career, they would only do groups because they realized how beneficial that mm-hmm. was for clients to be in a, um, a process group to, to, you know, live out that accountability in those types of groups. And you get the most, you know, personal growth out of those, out of those items. And I mean, that's been lost kind of in, you know, 2023, but in the, in the nineties, when those, um, when those, uh, you know, contributors to psychology were, were big, that was, you know, major part of their contribution was those, that yeah. type of counseling. Yeah. You, you know, to expand what you said, the, the modern field of psychology is very, you know, one dimensional, and it is, uh, in in my opinion, uh, done for profit. That's what we're interested in doing most often is to make money. Well, now, now in this field, you got to be careful though, because you're dealing with human lives and, and and people who are suffering, and so you know here, you know, we value. Um, you know what is best for the client, and so we look at the best of psychology. Carl Rogers, you know, he would talk about B values. Now this is like back in the chapter that you don't have to <laughs> memorize for the test and, and read, you know. But um, he taught, you know, and Maslow, which he's he's sort of lumped in with. They talked a lot about creativity, mm. and the their theory was that that's part of why people go crazy is because they disconnect from the inspiration of life and and how that changes the way that you think and and believe like learning how to appreciate things like beauty and so if i go to an art gallery and i look at a beautiful painting i'm not wasting my time if we teach the kids how to sing bible songs from the time that they know how to think you know, and uh, we spend time, you know, in art classes. We're, we're you know, th- there's something very, very important, you know. And, and so when, when it comes time for me to lose my mind, and like think of all the forms of, of how that could happen. Like I, I'm so angry, I want to tear somebody apart. It's the most simplest thing that I could do in reaction to something that happens to me. And so, you know, and, and people get killed. Like if, if I know how to appreciate you know, the true value in somebody who's my enemy, you know, that won't happen. 
and that's what Carl Rogers was into. And he and he said like like and if you do not learn how to pursue those higher order things, we all know that Maslow like hierarchy of needs, you know the pyramid, <laughs> you know these B values. Yeah, you know, we're so very important that people, uh, you know, learn how to appreciate. And so when you get into groups, like like we've had people who've fallen into the mainstream of 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 ca- uh, counseling, which is the most profitable thing I can do is have you in an individual session. You know, it's the easiest. You know, for, forgive the folks out there who are listening. Oh, what what are you talking about? You know, but we really want you to know that. Uh, you know, this part, this higher order in, in recovering from whatever brought you to counseling. It could be, even be marital problems, you know, things that you wouldn't think of, like, what's this group going to do for me? You learn how to appreciate other people's problems at least as much as your own. And that is a big part of, of getting your mind right. Carl Rogers and, and the greats of, of providing the treatment systems that we've had in the past knew that studied it researched it and and the, and the sad thing is is that uh, there is really uh, no motivation to pursue those things in a lot of places in, in, in the treatment delivery systems now well yeah and I would think just to that to that point like we're talking about like the insurance companies and things like that and the and the rise of like just symptom reduction and, and the insurance companies come along and say you know we have to protect the consumer we need something that's going to be you know quick and effective um, and you know after a while you start to realize that they've um, in that effort to protect the consumer that that they've um, kind of over overwritten the uh, what you know things like group counseling can do for people because it's not as is you know here's these 12 steps here's these it's not as as quick um, and measurable as um, as maybe an individual session if you track individual sessions over like over like 12 sessions something like that right yeah and and, and we reference Yalom a lot yeah you know, who, who who's really he's a he's a a genius in the field and looks at the research and how artificial some of that stuff is measured because we can we can develop this this measurement in 12 sessions and say oh you know we really got to a place uh, a great place with your symptom yeah uh you know our, our people are trained uh, you know throughout everything that we do and you know so so tell me if this sounds familiar uh, in the contextual behavioral sciences that's that's the core of our you know we have theological training and then we have psychological training and the psychological branch is in contextual behavioral science it is it is a researched way of helping people resolve their issues that says that you know that that's that is well demonstrated in the research Yalom and, and and the people who are worth their salt in this if i can say it that way that if you go the path of symptom reduction with people it's like a yo-yo and so you can get them out so far to say, I'm not, I'm not experiencing this symptom anymore and say, the study's done. <laughs> but <laughs> six weeks from there, that slingshots back. And the symptom is worse than when they first started out. And if you graph that, you see this up, down, up, down, you know, kind of graph that the symptom reduction folks don't want to talk about. They won't reference those studies but the true scientists in this field look at all the studies and you just you don't reject them because they're not saying what you want them to say and and for that symptom reduction is a very unrealistic way of handling your problems you know so for for that um, you know these you know, I don't know where to go from. Well, <laughs> I'm sort of losing my, I'm losing my train of thought. And, 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 and Irvin Lom's a good point too, is because he was he was really into existential psychotherapy, which yeah. you know goes along to what Ben was talking about, which was you know we you know at some point you have to you have to realize how how small your existence is mm-hmm. and surrender yourself to something to mm-hmm. something bigger, a bigger purpose, and, and develop meaning in your life in order to be. Mm-hmm. And we talk about that in the therapy we do to be flexible to things that happen in your life. It's you know it's it's more creative. It's more you know expanding somebody's you know view of whatever problem that they got stuck in, whether it's depression, anxiety, addiction, marital problems, and learning how to face your life and appreciate it again. 
Does it ever frustrate you having to think about like symptom reduction and justifying doing insurance and all this stuff? Well, you know, with insurance companies, and I, I'm, I've just been exploring this. Sorry, you know, that's so, an odd question. So, some of the insurance companies do not value group therapy. Mm. And so the, it, it's, uh, you know, probably a little bit too much to, to get into with the public, but uh, they, you know, really, I think the whole culture now is, is relying on mental health and symptom reduction. And so they are just willing to, like, that's what they're engaging. You know, so it's hard to get people's minds, especially even the counselors, their minds outside of that. And, uh, you know, insurance companies can be the bad guy. You know, we, you know, we, we value our insurance companies because, you know, people would have a hard time investing, you know, in, in getting help. But uh, ultimately, there's bigger forces than the insurance company that seek to leverage those things because the slingshot that is in the study of, of anything like if, if you're engaging a form of treatment that is that is geared to make you feel better what you're engaging is a lifetime of therapy and uh, we have seen people in counseling that you know I've I've been in practice now 27 years and uh, it's scary to think that but you know I've seen people spend their whole lives in counseling it was never meant to be that way you know, but it is the most profitable way. You know, here we will move you to something significant and impactful, uh, and it, you know, and and if you can get there, you know, the gains that you make in growth are sustainable and more permanent. You know, we all have times in our life where we fall back to some kind of habit or or, or something, but that's part of the creativity is is to is to be able to see where things can go. You know, and not make it about smaller, insignificant things. Like whether I feel good or bad in a moment, you know, I need to have my, my mind set on, on more valuable things. And, and so counseling should encourage us to do that. And, you know, and in God's design, you know, what we're, we're walking alongside people in this, in this Christian life I believe that that you know that that's there for us to see. So, so there's a lot of things we just got to watch out for, you know. And uh, you, you know, you look back into these theorists like Carl Rogers and uh, even Maslow. Like I wouldn't completely agree with them, you know, mm -hmm. in their in their humanistic philosophy. They lifted up the values of creativity, you know, and how you'd find that in treatment. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know they were really great people, you know, in this field that probably would have been rejected today. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Cause what they're proposing is not, is not the pathway to, uh, you know, f financial success. Um, but we believe, you know, here that, you know, having strong, you know, families, people who are strong in their emotional constitution is, you know, doing our best for them is, is the best way. You know, I, to have a career. I think with all of that, like, you know, we can, as we look at things that are successful in almost like a secular psychology field, I like to think that the Bible will back that up. You know, like it has, like God is our ultimate counselor, right? And so like, as you were talking, two verses that kind of came to mind is like, in this world you will have trouble, but what? But I've overcome the world, right? Mm. And so setting that almost like, this is my background for everything. And so if I can expand and like I have that hope, right? The, the here and now gets easier to work through. And hmm. then, you know, when you think about the church in Acts, right? It says that the believers got together and had everything in common. Mm -hmm. And so as we think about a group. That was a tag group. That's it was a tag, a tag group. group. That was a tag group. <laughs> Acts was just a tag group. <laughs> um, but yeah, like how important is that, you know, in our walk, in our, relationships yeah it's fun being around people who like what, what's the counseling term universality you know whenever you realize that oh i'm not alone you mm. feel you know you're going through this too we can share it mm -hmm. we can go through it together yeah yeah it that's helps. a big deal it helps a ton it helps with everything counseling t you know the whole idea of a team is just we're better together mm -hmm. we're a lot better together mm -hmm. yeah
Yeah, if you can get the sense that that you're not alone in your problems, that's a big deal here. You know, and and it really does help. And we're not alone as counselors. You know, it's because mm-hmm. we always think that. Well, I keep saying we. Everything is me. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm dealing with this thing and I got this client or this thing's going on and nobody would ever understand this or this is the toughest situation, you know, and you just, you feel isolated. Then you get in group or you get to talking to somebody and you're like, oh, you get this, you had this, you've experienced this, you know what's going on. You know, there's, we can, we can share, you know, you share, you help each other, you talk each other through even little frustrations. It's like, well, you know, that's understandable to be frustrated about this. Maybe think about it this way. And we had some, there was something I was frustrated about the other day. I think it was yesterday, and I told you, and you were like, "Well, that's understandable." But then you gave me some new little perspective, and I was like, "Huh?" This is on intake. Well, <laughs> the intake. Said, we well, do so work you, you on intake. Our, <laughs> <laughs> this is like a discussion. No. <laughs> hey, listen, intake is so I tell you. What is about I know you started, guys really work hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> she started a question of the day that has honestly opened up like this giant world of j- information and just conversation amongst everybody. Mm-hmm. Just these random questions of the day that wound up, they grow. Like they become, they honestly get kind of wild. Like just something little and mm-hmm. you learn, you learn so much about people. Like a lot about people and it's yeah. weird feeling it's not weird but it's interesting that i feel so connected with people that i don't physically see but mm-hmm. you just have so much you help each other you help each other through things you know there's especially with new people coming on hey what's this situation what's this going on here boom this is what you do this is how you do this this is what we can help you with this but then you mix that with you mix the problem solving and the assistance along the way with the feeling of like being, you know, if it's a day when you've had 150 calls go through and everybody's like losing their mind, you know, it's like you just went to battle together. <laughs> and then you also add the fact that these little moments in between moments of finding out interesting things about a different person and, <laughs> you know, different interests. What's this person doing? you know what's this person doing this weekend which might not necessarily always be like some big thing but then when you find out like oh well jackie boars has given up her her gold medal to a from the diving competition and she's doing then you're like wait what what (laughs) hang on a second let's go let's go back a second here and then you you know you find out what people's like kids do and what and it's people are just fascinating yeah and it's just hearing what people like what they you know I'm just like telling everybody's doing this week. Jordan, like <laughs> Jordan, you know, hearing Jordan talk about, he's super excited. He's going to a Titanic exhibition. That's when he's telling us all these facts about the Titanic. I'm like, dude, that's cool. Like yeah. just because he loves it. Well, one of the things that, that, <laughs> that I'm learning today, you know, just the, you know, hearing you talk about intake, you know, so uh, our, our whole team of people that, that are on the phone lines uh, are working together in, in teams. So you have a lot of connection there, mm-hmm. even though, um, you know, we, we, we don't all, all the time work in the same office, mm-hmm. so we're able to connect over that. It's obvious to me, though, you know, that, that that's happening. That's really cool. And, the, you, know, you know, if you could uh, put John 1633 up there on our screen, um, you, you know, you think about how, you know, one person can help out another. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the things that we teach in our, our uh, group counseling is to develop this empathy. And, and, and that's, you know, part of creativity is, is like learning how to care about things. You know, mm-hmm. and so like, like I, I would care that somebody could help me and I could help them. You know, and, and that's, that's what you're describing, like, you know, just finding out like what, like the people are doing things uh, and overcoming barriers we solve problems every day <laughs> well and i think you know. the more comfortable i don't even know if it you and maybe you have because all of your time at chick-fil-a like i feel like you learned a lot of this stuff but the more you connect in that way the more people will come to you with other things like work-related things when you're yeah. new you 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 know you don't i should know this they taught me this in training i don't want to ask this question but once you've already engaged and mm-hmm. once you've told somebody some goofy story from your childhood that day you're a lot more inclined to be like okay we've already you know we've shared so much already i i feel way more comfortable saying hey you know 
hey, Ronnie, what's, uh, am I supposed to, you know, how do I send the form? Which thing do I send to send the forms? And, and I think people interact way more that way, which is in a way also trains people and gets them more efficient way quicker. Like it just, it, it's just neat how it all works together. Like by yeah. forming a relationship based on just caring and like understanding like that, it also fosters just growth within the, um, you know, the role, like within the intake, you know, the, the job itself, you would think they have nothing to do with one another, but by building one and it, it works, it yeah. just makes the other one go well. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. So, so, so Isabel, you, you referenced the, you know, John chapter sixteen thirty three says these things I have spoken to you. So in me, you may have peace in the world. You'll have tribulation or trouble, but take courage. I've overcome the world. And, and that's the sense, you know, that we, uh, we get with God, you know, that, uh, you know, in life we have the opportunity to overcome. We can get that sense, you know, and, and that kind of empathy with each other, you know, and so you get that on work teams. And, you know, I, I would, I'd like to see what you think about this, but, uh, you know, being counselors and knowing what people uh will experience during the holidays Mm -hmm. and uh you know i'd i'd put this verse up there and and you just hope that somebody during the holidays would see this podcast and you know be able to believe that if they're in a place where you know the the holidays aren't meaning too much to me or maybe it's worse than that i'm not only bored but I'm, i'm hopeless uh or i'm in despair that they could tell that that we know that this is real, and even if you're in a place where where you can't believe this right now, you know that whatever problem that you face, uh, you should never give up, and that you could overcome that. You know that's a promise that that when we're with God, that we'll have that opportunity. To be fair, it doesn't guarantee it. <laughs> you know, however, just to have that chance, you know, to do that, and if you're with us. You know, if you'll come to spend the holidays with us, and we'll be in the office. Mm-hmm. So, call call Ben, call Isabel. <laughs> they'll answer the phone, and and they'll talk to you, and uh, you can come and meet with us, and, and maybe we would walk through a, a desperate time like that together. You know, that's what we want to do as counselors during the holiday, and and I hope that people watching uh, would would really be able to to empathize with us know that that's real know that we want to do that you know so so you know thinking about the holidays though um either just as as a counselor or you know even as your family's like uh uh you you know what goes on for you during the holidays uh you know what do you think of when you say we have christmas coming up um you know what are your lives like (laughs) Hmm. um I love. I think we both love Christmas. We do. We've we- <laughs> been talking about that a lot. I love Christmas. Um, but you never believe in Santa Claus. What? I didn't. No. <laughs> I know. There's a, um, so so the, the the church there's there's a division there that Santa Claus is is, is okay. Santa Claus is not okay. Yeah. Did okay. your parents just not think it was? Sorry, Sean. My- <laughs> My dad was heartbroken when he found out. Yeah. So he was like, no, that was too much trauma for me. <laughs> so he never. We had to talk the other day. Is how long did you believe in? Yeah. It was, that, was a, that was an interesting one because I believed probably way too long. Okay. Well, how old were you when? I don't know the age, but my family like went. Well, and it's interesting because you're, I don't have much you want to go into. So both of our families are kind of extreme, I guess. Is that a fair word? That's fair. In a good way. In a good, in a good way. way. In a very good way. And so I was surprised to hear that. But it, I, when she told me the story, that made sense. Um, no, like my family went, it was my neighborhood. They would do things. You know, I remember there would always be jingle bell, like the sleigh bells outside of my window. I remember this very vividly one year, unless it's just made up memory. But um, I hear sleigh bells. I go running into my parents' room to tell them that, you know, Santa was here. And they're both in, you know, so like they're in there. And then there would be, and I'm pretty sure it's my neighbor, Dwayne. He would, he would come by with sleigh bells and then he would, 
put a ladder, he'd get up on the roof and walk on the roof. She would hear him walking on the roof. We had like muddy reindeer footprints and uh, leftover in the kitchen one year. Just all <laughs> kinds of wild stuff. Like you name it. Just and I think everybody in the neighborhood would do that to help. It, you know, just because there's a lot of kids. Yeah. And so you know, okay, then that would happen. Then my dad would leave, and then he'd go do the same thing at at the squire's house, and then he'd get on their roof, and so they'd all be sitting there freaking out, like, "Oh my gosh, Santa's on the roof! Santa's on the roof! Santa's on the roof!" <laughs> Just kind of wild stuff. That I is guess. pretty wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've, I've never heard of that. It's a little, yeah. I mean, like, you know, in, in, in modern neighborhoods, people doing that, but that's, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> we had a little, yeah. But I mean, if, you know, are, are we even allowed to, like, you know, just spoiler alert? I mean, are we allowed to talk about this? Is this okay? I, I don't think. Do we have listeners under 12? <laughs> <laughs> listeners under 12, please check out of this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> if you've made it this far. Um, I even said, I'm, no, I don't even think, I'm probably 92% sure Santa's not real. I could be swayed the other way. I'm still open. I mean, with the internet now, do kids even... We've, uh, we've had theological discussions <laughs> that... that um, I, I, I can't even go there, but there's a, there's a theological, you, you know, that... That the spirit, you know, that is in Christmas is real because it's, you know, the Holy Spirit. Mm. And that was, you know, what was celebrated, you know, in, in St. Nick. It was not St. Nicholas, but it was the Holy Spirit that drove St. Nicholas to do what he did. Mm. You know, and so that is still alive today and could, you know, make the world celebrate. I always think of the Holy Spirit when I think of Christmas Carol, past, present, future. You know that somebody mm-hmm. can have redemption and what you know no matter what you've done in in that amount of time and the fact that god's timeless doesn't exist in 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 past present and future like we do and the holy spirit can put it on somebody's mm-hmm. heart that you know yeah, we have to be careful with this conversation story. though because <laughs> sorry <laughs> we're, we're, we're gravitating towards santa claus israel as well <laughs> see I'm, I'm getting excited thinking about it <laughs> how do you like that I know. <laughs> No, My so, whole so changed. <laughs> what I'm interested in is to tell me, you know, so mm-hmm. did that make a difference? You know, because uh, evangelical families, mm-hmm. you know, especially will decide we are not going to do Santa Claus. Now, instantly, there's no Santa Claus presence. Mm-hmm. There's no Santa Claus. Because, yeah. you know, if you don't believe, that's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so did that make a difference, or are you saying I was just as happy as every other kid? Who, I was gonna say I loved Christmas, or I was still. more happy. Yes, I. Could be. I don't know. I don't know. I think there is a piece that I was like, almost like so much more grateful for my parents. Of like, mm. I knew that they put this together like because they loved me, and so knowing that it was them mm. was like. I'm I don't not, know. I'm, I, not I, I'm some guy in a red suit. With I guess if I thought beer. deeply about it, I'd probably be like, oh, maybe that, you know, fostered gratitude and did all this stuff. But um, yeah, my my parents are great, like Christmas celebrators. We, it went well. Yeah. Okay. Would you say your parents are just good celebrators? <laughs> they're, they're very creative people. <laughs> so, you know, they, yeah. one of my favorite Christmas traditions, we do um, homemade gifts. Um, and so, you know, our gifts to each other will be, you know, you have to make it. You have to tell think me. A, about tell it. me a, your favorite homemade gift that you've got. Favorite gotten. homemade gift. I've gotten a lot that I love. It sounds very artistic. I very artsy. One that I made that I loved. I'm after I got married. I made um, the song that me and my dad danced to. I like put the sheet. I painted the sheet music and painted a portrait of us dancing on it. Um, and it was one of my favorite ones to do and to give, um, which. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a, another story like that that I can tell. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, that's. So. Okay. So, so, so that is the gift that you gave. Yeah. How long did you spend doing that um, to make it? Decent amount of time. Usually, I get to Thanksgiving. Like five minutes. <laughs> I did it the day before. No. Um, On my way around, to work. <laughs> usually around Thanksgiving. In session. I, yeah. <laughs> Could you turn a little bit? Your... <laughs> no. Usually around Thanksgiving, I hit this like, oh shoot, like <laughs> we're we're getting really close. Yeah. And I have to throw something together. So. Okay. It's not always the most organized thing in the world, but. That's my favorite thing that I do for Christmas. That's nice. Ben, what do you think? A gift gift that you've gotten at Christmas time 
from Santa Claus. Can can you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's compare memories. Oh my gosh! Well, you never said you never finished that. By the way, you never got one that you received as your favorite. A gift that I received. Yeah, that was the second part of the question. Oh. Um, yeah, I wasn't going to press her, but yeah, okay. I was say, I've gotten so many. You didn't answer the question. I, about. <laughs> my my dad recently, because he's done this twice now, because we've lived in two different homes. He's made me like a Christmas model of my house, and it lights up, and it has like us in the window, and like wow. it's very cool. That's so cool. That is cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> I would say my stuff is my parents do things like randomly throughout the year. My mom's really big in sending me um, just random stuff. She she'll make she draws pictures and then creates um, like fake stories. Like she sent me when I got my provisional, she created uh, an LPC or a provisional license for me and put all these like just random things. Like she drew the whole thing and made a license. Wow. And little things like that are my favorite things. Like I've got a, these are like really cool adult gifts. They're like, they go, <laughs> I thought I was like I waiting for like, I got a toy truck. <laughs> <laughs> I you were wreck. Um, yeah. Do That's a story for another day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? No, no, no we're not. Um, it's calm. <laughs> but yeah, things like that, are just, you know, and, and I would say my dad's not like a, that's not his thing, but he's, he's always been very invested in things that I enjoy, which I always thought was cool, even if he doesn't care anything about them. Like if it's nothing that he's into, if it's something that I'm into, he's all in like, you know, let's, you know, let me, let's go to the, wherever you need to go to learn more about it, get more, do whatever you need to do about it. I think this is, you know, a good investment in you. So let's, like with music kind of stuff, he's always been real big into that. Like he loves going to guitar stores with me, even though he knows nothing about guitars or anything. But he just he just has the time of his life just sitting there hanging out, just looking at things, watching me play, stuff like that. And you know, those are those are fun gifts for me. Like that's we've gone to a guitar store for my birthday every year for the hmm. past couple of years and just Do you like the Kinks? Have you have you ever listened to the Kinks? I've heard the Kinks. I can't Alex, can you uh, bring up Father Christmas lyrics by the Kinks? Um <laughs> Because you asked, like, what did I ask for for as a kid from Santa Claus? And um, I can't, you've never heard that song. It's, it's probably ancient by now. It used <laughs> to be very, very popular. But it says, Father Christmas, bring me some money. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I can't remember the, if I get the lyrics. When I was small, I believed in Santa Claus. Though I knew it was my, it was my dad. And, uh, but last time I played Father Christmas, I stood outside the department store. A gang of kids came over and mugged me and knocked my reindeer to the floor. And the, the, the chorus is, they said, Father Christmas, give us some money. Don't mess around with those silly toys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll beat you up if you don't hand it over. We want your bread, so don't make us annoyed. Give all the toys to the little rich boys. So <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting when you brought up this song, but this was not it. <laughs> If I, it's probably too involved to play. Gary, do you remember that song? No. What is what is, what is going on? A very niche All right. Song. So do you do you do you know who the Kinks are? Can we play it at the intake Christmas party? Yeah. All right. There we go. It's a dangerous song because, <laughs> because um, yeah, that was one of my uh, memories. Like I would always ask for money <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> I wasn't selfish. Don't get in the, you know, but, uh, yeah. Um, I thought about, uh, this is a teenager. Other than that, um, you know, cause I always wanted to buy all the star Wars figures. Oh, nice. And so if I could get like a hundred bucks, I could go to the store, but I didn't believe in Santa Claus by that time. Mm. I, was getting, <laughs> I wanted my, I wanted my parents to give me some money. And and get these little little Star Wars guys. When is that? I was thinking about that one day. When does? At what age? Like, do you remember the time when you stopped loving like action figures? Like, I used to be able to sit there for three hours, four hours, and just have an X Men battle. Yeah. And <laughs> at, there's at one point in time that stopped being something I wanted to do. And yeah, I'd I'd, I'd army guys. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I could probably like even as as young teenager, army guys were important. I bet you. I bet you had a blast. Did you, well, did you have something? Were you, were you Barbie? No, no. Never Barbie. Um, I had like American Girl dolls. 
American girl boss. That was big. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably why you don't know about the kinks. But uh, <laughs> it's a separate. They didn't run in the same circle. Promise me, you'll, yeah, I'll play it at the Christmas party. But but promise me, you'll go home and listen to that. The kinks, yeah, and and, and tell me what you think. Uh, but um, yeah, you know. So do you know? Um, so it sounds like you had an awesome experience in the way that you celebrated Christmas. Mm-hmm. You did too, celebrating, you know, uh, with, with Santa Claus. And, uh, you know, I can't remember how old I was. You know, Gary, do you remember how old you were when you uh, were told Santa Claus um, was not going to give you presents anymore? <laughs> it's probably in first grade. Mm. How about you, Alex? Um, I think I was like third grade. Third grade? Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, I can't remember how old I was. But do you know, do you know like, where that tradition comes from? I got I got nine minutes here. On this <laughs> you don't you don't know the uh-uh. story of Saint Nick. I should. I was gonna say so, I feel like I should. So there's really? there's this this movie and I can't you know Alex can you bring up the movie with Kirk Cameron about uh, why we should celebrate Christmas? You have to do some research on it. I can't remember the title, but it's you know Kirk Cameron didn't make like a hundred thousand movies, so hopefully you could look <laughs> it up. But it's not left behind. It's not. It's not the Left Behind series. The <laughs> Christmas <laughs> edition. <laughs> That'd be wild. <laughs> I can make like a ton of jokes now, but I won't. So the um, <laughs> the apocalypse <laughs> on Christmas. It's, <laughs> it's like you're ripping over Christmas Day. People disappear. <laughs> I'd watch that <laughs> movie. I think so, we have like, an idea here. If you have here. a Santa Claus suit on, you're definitely not going to go with. The <laughs> sure. But um, that's good. We should just wear one every day now. <laughs> <laughs> now the. Um, yeah, so so he has a he 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 makes this whole movie and you know Kirk Cameron, uh, you know, everybody knows him for Left Behind and Fireproof, which are now mm-hmm. real, really old movies. But uh, he uh, makes this movie about should you celebrate Christmas, and that's actually you know historically been a question because like early on in, in American history, Christmas was outlawed by the church. And I think, you know, it's been a while since I looked over this history, but I used to study it. And, um, you know, the, so the Puritans were, were definitely against Christmas. And you get in trouble. You get kicked out of the church for celebrating Christmas. And so, you know, is it okay to, you know, to celebrate, like, with Santa Claus or without Santa Claus? He, he seeks to answer that. But within that, he lifts up who St. Nicholas was. Hmm. And in, in the old German tradition in parts of Europe, that's where that came out of. And in the Catholic Church, they took these pagan celebrations because in the middle of winter, um, it's the darkest time of year. You know? And so it was just natural that celebrations would occur to try to, what we believe, lift people out of uh, despair in a place where it was, was physically difficult. You know, you'd have people who were starving and dying, so you'd have festivals. The church came alongside that and said, let's, let's make these things Christian celebrations. So we know that you know, the, the birth of Christ was probably not in December. <laughs> I mean, it could be, but that's not why it was put there. And then St. Nicholas was an early bishop who he was like a real intense person. He was born rich into a rich family. And then uh, he uh, became an orphan, I believe. And I, I don't want to misquote the whole story, but that was part of it. And he, he had this inheritance uh, that he gave his life to Christ. And in the midst of all of that, uh, he took on a heart for other orphans and people who would become destitute. And so one of the ways that you'd become destitute in families is you get into financial trouble, and then you'd have to sell your children into slavery. Uh, and, and so how that would happen, you know, it would happen multiple ways, but if you didn't have the money to pay back, something had to happen. And so St. Nicholas would go around and find these families that were going to uh, you know, be put into uh, a type of slavery, and through the window he would give his money away and Aww. throw through the window in the middle of the night because he wished to remain anonymous. And so this, the stories of the stockings, like in the old days, you'd, you'd hang up the stockings you know, over the fire to dry them. 
because he didn't have dryers. Mm -hmm. And so just by accident, he was throwing, you know, gold pieces through the window and they landed in the stockings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people would discover that in the morning and realize that their whole lives had been changed and that they were now, you know, with, you know, Mm -hmm. had hope they could pay back their debts. That's cool. Yeah. And, and, you know, so these might be myths. They might have actually happened. Yeah, but the more definable things about uh, about St. Nicholas is that he was also sort of like a John the Baptist type character. He was then he eventually thrown in jail, you know, for you know challenging a church leader, uh, a bishop. He, he you know, the, the bishop was leading the church in the wrong direction, you know, and and speaking what he acknowledged as heresy, and he and he went up and punched a guy out, and they threw him in jail until the next bishop got, got in and mm. let him go. You know, so, um, you know, he was a, a radical Christian leader, you know, within the church and eventually becomes a saint or regarded as, you know, one of the people who, inspired by God who did it right. Mm. Uh, and, um, yeah, so, so they began to celebrate him as this mythical character who could do anything. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And and um, yeah, so that's that's Saint Nicholas. Eventually, in American history, then he gets commercialized uh, and and turned into Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, but in a Christian sense, you, you know, when something when God inspires us to do something creative and good, you know, uh, we could have that in our memory and celebrate it. You know, someday we, we hope that, you know, what we do here, you know, uh, the history of it, uh, you know, will be acknowledged as good. Mm-hmm. And people will be like, oh, that was really great. What better could we do with our lives? You know, and, uh, and, and they would celebrate it, you know, because it made things better. And so that's what we did with St. Nicholas, you know, or, or what we used to. And now, yeah, sometimes like in, in Christmas time, it sounds like you had, you've had very good Christmases. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah, some people they're completely disconnected from that, mm-hmm. you know. So, so I would say to the folks out there that uh, y- you know, I, I hope that uh, we uh, inspired you to think about you know the possibilities of what you could you could do in your life. You know, if you're in a place that's stuck uh, or in a place where you were bored and, and hopeless especially this, you know, this holiday season, come talk to us, you know, in a, in a creative way. <laughs> We'd like to inspire each other, you know, to get back to a place. And uh, you'll meet counselors like Isabel mm-hmm. and Ben. <laughs> if you call, you can talk to Isabel or to Ben. And, uh, uh, you know, there's counselors just like them, you know, who are on our phone lines every day, you know, waiting to talk to you. So you don't have to be alone this Christmas. Uh, you don't have to be without hope. And, uh, you know, we hope that together, you know, we could uh, work together in counseling that someday, you know, uh, uh, you know, what we did in our lives, you know, would be important to people. It would matter. You know, and, and for that, we have to think creatively. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to get a vision of the future. And, and, and that's part of what happens in counseling. That's part of what happens in the church. So, uh, so thanks for being with us today. Yeah. This was really great to talk with you. And you. Uh, could I ask, you know, one of you would you would you say a prayer for the folks out there, you know, in the, in the holiday season who might be, you know, in this place where, you know, they're not engaging things, they're just asking for money at Christmas, uh, you know, hoping for something, but 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 really, you know, feeling empty. Maybe we'd we'd pray that we could we could connect w- w- with somebody out there like that. Does that sound okay? Would, mm-hmm. who, would you lead us in yeah, prayer, Isabel? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Yeah. Father God, we just praise you um, for your goodness, um, for your greatness, God. We stand in awe of who you are. God, we pray a special blessing over this Christmas season, God, that you would just encounter people you know, in the hard spaces, that you would shine your hope um, in their lives in a way that only you can. Um, and God, I pray that as people come to us, for assistance that you would um, just fill us with the Holy Spirit um, and help us to um, just meet them where they're at and to guide them into your love. 
We thank you for the opportunity to meet together and to glorify you in your name. Amen. 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 Happy Thanksgiving and a Merry Christmas, folks. We'll see you next time. Thank you.